today's message um, was just laid on me th- this week, actually. Um, I'm, I'm c- kind of taking another little break from the prayer series, but not really, because it really has a lot to do with the prayer. Everything has to do with prayer. Because prayer is communion. Prayer is communion with God. And this is something we need to be doing like all of the time if possible. The, the question today, the, it sounds, it, it's, it, it can, you can look at it a couple different ways. How does the Holy Spirit help us? Now, that could mean, okay, what happens when he helps us where do we go? But I'm thinking more of how does that happen? Uh, Gary Cassie talks about this, about being a Christian scientist. Not a Christian science, but a Christian scientist where you ask a question and you go and delve into finding out how does that happen? And that's kind of what, that's kind of the, 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 the tack I took this week. And it was really, it was really awesome. So we ask for help, first of all, and sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do for some people. It wasn't for me for a long, long time. And even today, it's still a little bit difficult to ask for help. But we ask for help, that's when he can get started. That's when the Holy Spirit can get started. He was meant to be a helper. That's, what, that's his role. That's one of his roles. He has many roles, but, but he, he, his role is to be a helper. In John 14, 26, it says that very clearly. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So, you see that he, it says that he will teach you all things. We don't, I don't think we believe that, honestly. I think we, we, it sounds good to us, but I don't think, I mean, we may believe it for a moment, ter- for a moment or for a week or a day or so, so forth. But man, when things get tough, do we, do we believe that he will teach us all things and bring back to remembrance? There's a lot of conditions for that. We're going, to be, we're going to go back to these grace-based conditions that we've been talking about over this last year. There's, there's conditions to him teaching you all things and bringing to your remembrance all things that he has said to you, that Jesus has said to you, to us. But it, it, it does. You, I mean, there's a lot of testimony in here. I know I can, I hopefully we'll hear some afterwards about how Jesus br- brings things to your remembrance that when you need them, there they are. This is awesome. But he has that role. He is the spirit of Jesus. Philippians 1.19 For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. The supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ Jesus. He is the spirit of the Father. Matthew 10, 19 and 20. I'll read that. But this is out of the New King James. I've Went to the New King James this, this week. But when, you, when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. Uh, now, I'll take a little bit of uh, liberty there, is that I think that when you're presenting, um, unless you have complete 100% overflow of you've been in the Word so much that you ju- it just flows out of you. I'm not there. I'll be honest with you. I'm transparent. I study, and I, and I, and it, and then I'm, re- and then it's revealed. But to just get up and talk and thinking that the Holy Spirit's going to take care of it, um, that's not what this is saying. But when they deliver you up, he's talking about delivered up. When we're persecuted, I mean, it's it could be coming. It's happening in a lot of countries nearby. When they deliver you up, then that's what he's talking about, the Holy Spirit. If you have been in communication, if you have been constantly and continuously and chronically been pivoting your soul towards the will of God, towards understanding his opinion, understanding how he thinks, understanding his concepts and how he believes, the God, God, the Father, 
When we pivot our souls there, we do that on a regular basis now while things are just kind of cool, really. I mean, things are bad, but my gosh, this is, I mean, we have a great place to live here. We, we have, a, this is a nice city. Everybody's pretty, we don't see any of that in our personal lives just yet. This is the time for preparation. Not in anticipation of that happen, happening, but in preparation of getting to know God better and better and better and better so that if something happens, you're there. You're there. You're ready. You know that it's his word that you're looking at, not the circumstances that are coming at you, not the persecution that's coming at you, not the you lose your job or you get a divorce or you get a car wreck or all that stuff that happens in this fallen world and then even worse things, you get a report from the doctor It says, your, your time is close. If you're not prepared, if, you, if there's no communication before that, I'm, I'm saying God has mercy. He'll give you grace. I, I, I believe that can be. But if we keep going the way that we're going this past year, learning about prayer, and we just keep at it, we will be prepared so that this peace that we have in us will not just go away when catastrophe comes. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour when, what you should speak. For it is not you who speak. But who? The Spirit of the Father who speaks in you. It is the Spirit. When we say the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the Godhead is in us. How does that actually, how, how does it actually happen that he helps us is what we're looking at. How does that actually take place? Because obviously he doesn't just push us around. We're not automatons that where he just moves us around, which some people actually believe. I mean, we think that's hilarious, but no, there's people that actually believe that, that God is sovereign and nothing happens without his will. You remember 9-11? I mean, most of you do. Some people don't, not, don't remember 9-11. Some people don't have a clue what 9-11 was about. But that's, those are people that believe that nothing happens without his will. That's why 9-11 took place. So, John 16, 13 uh, says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So he guides us. He guides us. He, th that's what the scripture is saying. He's a guide. He guides us, and that means that we, we, we must be in pursuit of something. We have to have a goal. We have to have some place we know we're going for him to guide us. He's not going to guide us just because, we don't, you know, I mean, we don't have anything going on, and he's just going to could have put a rope around our neck and dragged us along. That's not what this is talking about. We must be in pursuit of something in order to be guided. It has to be in our minds, our wills, and our emotions to love God and to follow Him and to do His will, and then the Holy Spirit will guide us in that direction. And if you're not in pursuit of something, or if you've given up on, be, on being in pursuit of something, there's no need for guidance. It has to be initiated through, through, through the born-again believer. God will give you the desires of your heart, yes. He will give you the desire to love him. But you have to receive that. We have to receive it. But we have to have some goal in mind. We have to have something that we're going after. Something we're, we're pursuing, something we're going after to receive the guidance towards it. So if, so if we're being guided, if we're being guided, I was talking with Stan this, this morning earlier, and, 
And, and this kind of came up. If we're being guided, then we have to hear what he is saying when he is saying it. Now, if we're not paying attention and if we're letting the world filter, you know, push us around, letting the world come in and, and I'm not, don't, don't get me wrong that I'm not saying you don't pay attention to what's going on in the world. I, we, we should be active in, the, in what's going on in the world. That's why the world is in such a mess now because Christians weren't active for a period of 50 to 70 years. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you let that influence you and you get your mind off of Jesus and you get your mind off of the Holy Spirit, then the, the Holy Spirit can't really do anything for you, can't really guide you in that direction because there's somebody else guiding you in that direction. And I don't mean this to be like I'm so talking at you, 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 you. It's, um, it, I'm talking about me, too. This is what we need to do. We need to know that we are in pursuit of something daily, not just on Sundays and Tuesdays. Amen? We need to know that we're in pursuit of something and know that he's part of our life. He's part of how we brush our teeth. Amen? All right, so... But along with knowing what we're going after, we must continue to understand those grace based conditions that we've been talking about over this last year. The, ones, the, the conditions that Jesus, the words of Jesus in red in the Bible, that Jesus gave these conditions, these grace-based conditions, for us to have a whatsoever answer to whatsoever prayer. Because those grace-based those grace-based conditions dictate what our part is in having our prayers answered, and answered prayers is what guides us. Does that make sense? It's our prayers that get answered is what guides us. We know you all have experienced it. Now we just need to continue wherever you're at in that line of, of experiencing God's will and knowing that you're in God's will and you get an answered prayer. You know what that feels like. You know what, where, your, where your spirit goes and where your mind goes. And, and that, that's, that's, that should be on a continual basis. That's, that's, what we're, that's our goal, is to have that just be part of our just... Our just Average daily life, supernaturally natural. That's what we're after, I think. So those conditions, those conditions that Jesus talked about, are the basis of how the Holy Spirit helps us. I'm going to quote a lot of scriptures, but, and I hope, I hope they, they, they resonate because this... Is, this sounds, sounds different to me, but I, it makes sense. I, to me, it makes sense. So let's review some of the commands Jesus made. These are some of the commands Jesus made regarding how to receive answers to these whatsoever preposterous prayers that, we, that he said we could have. Whatsoever, you ask, I will do if you do these things. Okay, let's just take a few of them. There's, there's a lot of them, but I just took... There's only a couple here that Jesus himself did not say, but let's take, let's take uh, the first one is that, that we have the glory of God in mind when we ask. I was talking with Stan about that this morning. We have the, th this is a good way to put it, that when we ask, first we have the glory of God in mind. Now what does that mean? We've, I mean, I've heard that since I was in fourth grade in Catholic school. The glory of God, the glory of God, the glory of God. Then we talked about it a number of times that in the Greek, what I, what I really like about, you know, that, that I've learned about the Greek is that these words have a lot of great meaning. And that word doxa, glory, means opinion, the opinion of God. When we agree with the opinion of God, that's what gives him glory. So keep it, what, what we're saying here is that we have, we keep, 
we have the glory of God in mind before we pray. We don't have our deficiency in mind before we pray. We may have a deficiency. There may be something lacking in our lives, and we, may, and we can pray for that. But if we pray for it from the aspect of the glory of God, that the fulfillment of that will be to glorify Him, that changes everything. That changes the power. That changes, all, changes a lot if we can do that. So John 14, um, 13 and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. And where is the Son? In us. Where is the Father? Where is the glory of the Father and the Son? In us. It's in our spirits, though. It is not in our minds, our wills, and our emotions. And our minds being renewed is, but is being done by the Holy Spirit because he brings back remembrance of all things and he teaches us all things. That's in our spirit. That's in the mind of Christ. That's not in our mind that, that he's given us to live in this world with. But we're renewing that so that we understand the mind of Christ is able to glorify the Father who is in us. I mean, this has been my whole life, this idea of God up in heaven and us down here. And, I'm, and, I'm, and, and, and it's, it, it, to have the revelation that he is really, really in us, it, it, even, without, even without, well, I don't know if I should go that far, but I was going to say that even without just studying it day and night, when you know that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in your spirit now because you are a born-again person, then no matter what you do, you can relax because he's not going to let you miss it. It's not going to happen because you want that. You want that. You want his will. You want to glorify him. You want to know his opinion. You want to agree with that opinion and move forward in your life. And that's, that's what. So the 1 Corinthians 10.31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory Hallelujah. of God. Hallelujah. Whatever you do, if you eat or drink or brush your teeth, even if you don't brush your teeth, <laughs> you're still glorifying God if he's on your mind. If first you think about glorifying him before you pray, the keeping his glory in mind before you pray and while you're praying. But we do have to go through Jesus. Even though he's in us, we still have to go through Jesus. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So forget about it if you're going to try to do it on your own. I mean... We see in what's happening for people that are trying to do it on their own. We see what's happening. And it's the church's fault. I guarantee you. It's the church's fault. We're talking about this country right now. But it's, we're coming back. This is, this is um, I fully believe that in, in just the next couple of years, two or three years, that all of this is going to be back the way it was. Biblically based People won't even know it, some, because biblically based helps everybody. Even wokeism, it even helps them. It, it, it helps everybody if we stay on track with, what, with God's opinion, his will, and his thoughts. And that's, what's, that's what I believe is happening. But we all have to do something. We have to keep thinking about it and keep talking about it and be able to feel confident enough to... to Ask the right questions. You all know what I'm talking about. So let's, let's go on. Let's see. Um, so the, the 1 Timothy 2.5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That's it. It's the only way. It's the only way. And we must 
again, the other condition, the next condition is that we have to ask with his glory in mind through Jesus, but according to his will. Luke twenty two forty two says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Remember we talked about this last week or two weeks ago. This was Jesus' prayer that didn't get answered. That's his prayer right there. He knows how it feels to not have a prayer not answered. He says, if, it, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. You remember the beggar that said to Jesus, if you're willing, I will see. Jesus said the same thing to the Father. If you're willing, take this cup away from me. That prayer was not answered. Nevertheless, again, there's a colon there, but I think it was in the same breath. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Be done. And may, uh, Matthew 6.10 this is a good one. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, I mean, this is the idea that his will is to be done on earth. It's already being done in heaven. You go to heaven, it's God's will. Everything there is God's will. You're right. We're right about that. But in earth, we want it to be like heaven on earth. And that's what he's saying, that it's his will. And then 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Yes. According to his will. But we have to know his will. We have to know it. And I, and I think at first, there was a period of time, and that probably happens to this day in my, in my own life, where I, I didn't know, but I was moved forward in it anyway, just because it felt like it was God's will. And then eventually I found out whether it was or it wasn't, not necessarily by the success of it or by um, that there was no trials or tribulations, not, not because of that, but the peace. The peace inside, when, when, when I made that move, if I had peace, then I knew it was God's will. But I still might have had troubles. I still might have, uh, you know, d different different things happen. But but there's the peace was there. Then I'm I'm good. I'm good with it. We'll, it'll come out. It'll come out, and, and there will be good come out of it. So here's the one. Let's see. That I think most Christians have trouble with. This is one of those conditions that most Christians have trouble with. Can anybody guess what it is? Come on, take a guess. Just, okay, I'll give you a hint. So, let's see. The, the first one was, have the glory of God in mind. The second was, was uh, that we have to go through Jesus. The third one is, ask according to his will. And so this fourth one is uh, we're not there yet. That's coming. That's like number five or six. This is the one that we have trouble with. This is the one that we that's a challenge to us. Oh, I know you're gonna get it. Somebody. Somebody's getting it. I can just I can just hear it now. I'll give you another hint. It starts with the O. Obey. Obedience. Obedience. This is the one that most Christians have trouble with, is obedience. Now, this is the verse that wasn't spoken by Jesus, but it was spoken by John, and I'm sure it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, 1 John 3.22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments. His conditions that he gives us the grace to keep and do those things that are pleasing in his sight, not necessarily our sight. Don't get self-condemning here. Don't get any con condemnation. This is not about self-condemnation. But that's where, that's, where this always go that's where this always goes when we start talking about obedience and obeying. And I mean, it's a, just a natural tendency that 
if we kind of lean towards the soulish realm again, and the pivot hasn't completely gotten, <laughs> gotten around when we start getting about obedience. But we could go back to, to, to verse uh, 42 in, in, in Luke. Uh, didn't, we, didn't we talk, didn't we say that one already? No, maybe not. Luke, um, I don't have my, do I have my phone? I don't have my phone. Um, Luke 42, oh, here it is. Luke 22, 42, saying, um, yeah, we did. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That's obedience. That's obedience. He did not like, you said, somebody said, one of you two guys said, he didn't want to do it, but he did it. I think it was Howard. The communion message. He didn't want to do it, but he did it. His desire was given to him by his father. Because he was constantly in communication with him. So the father put the desire in his heart. Because when he got done with that Garden of Gethsemane, he stood up bold. He could have been envisioned by some of those soldiers as a nine-foot giant like Goliath. And just bold. And he says, I am, and the whole army goes down. And just, he got, had to get up off the ground to do that. He was laying on the ground, praying this prayer. And then, when he, when he, when he gave, submitted to his, his will to God, everything changed. That's the, that's the same that happens for us. And, and it isn't such a dramatic thing that it happens in a way like overnight it can. I'm, I mean, I've heard stories, but it's, it's a growth thing. We just grow into that. We just grow into that. But it is not, I, I know it is not taught a lot in the church because the church takes, I mean, in, in general, the church has taken this obedience thing to the level of where everybody's thinking that it's self-condemnation if you don't obey you know, then you're bad. God doesn't like you anymore. I, I read some a really famous guy that, that said that, you know, God doesn't like this stuff. Well, he doesn't like it, but it's not you that he doesn't like. He's not mad at you or me. He likes the obedience. That's the way he was with, with Jesus. As soon as he obeyed, he was like bold. Boldness came over him. Um, now here's the condition that has a, a, the underlying power and substance for heaven on earth living and living in the kingdom of God. Anybody guess what it is? It's not going to put it up there for you. <laughs> This is the one that makes everything happen. This is the one that makes it to where um, all things are possible. This is, this, is, this, is, this, is the, this is the condition that brings heaven to earth. Christ is a good start. Well, faith is part of it. It starts with the A. Then there's a B. And then there's an I. <laughs> abide in me. And I'll abide in you. This is what causes the whole thing to happen. When you're born again, it's the abide in me. This is the condition for the whatsoever preposterous prayers to be answered. This is the main condition. This is what makes, this is the, this is the key. John 15, 7, and others. There's many abide in me verses, but John 15, 7 is the one that, the one we're going to say now. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and that shall be done. And if you. you don't believe that, it won't happen. To the degree that you believe that, to the degree that we believe that, and, we, and some of us, we just can only believe so far. I don't know why. 
I, I haven't got that far yet. But I've seen evidence, and you all have seen evidence of it in your life. D different things, different challenges, different, different, just different things, whether it's for you or for somebody else, or people being healed, or people, or finances being taken care of, or health being taken care of, or just, just different things that happen in your life. And you, you see this evidence. You see that you are abiding in Jesus, and that's why you, it happens. Because you lay hands on somebody, they get healed. It's because he's abiding in you, and you're abiding in him, and his words are abiding in you. That's really the key, is his words abide in you. I'm telling you, we, we have been moving. I, you all know. I, now everybody knows. But we've been moving, and it's been, a, it's been, you know, how we've done it many, many times, but we're still not that great at it. But it's a, it's a struggle, and there's challenges, and there's, it, it, there's no more routine. Forget routine. You just, you know, anyway, we, we had to do it very kind of, anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure why I even went there, actually. <laughs> um, but I got away from his words abiding in me momentarily because things were just so... I mean, is this and then that and then this and then that. And little by little, I felt myself starting to lose the peace. And all I could think of, I need to get back in the Word. I need to get back in the Word. This is something for, for me that is awesome. Because it, I, I've been around a long time. And there was a long time that I would never have thought that. Never have thought, well, I need to get in his word. I would have just struggled through it, and somehow I would have made it because the angels were there for me or because, you know, God gave, gave us intelligence and he gave us a conscience and, he gave, and, and we can use those to the degree that we can use them. So we, we, I made it through somehow. But now I never lost the peace 100%. Got close a couple times. Really, got close a couple times, but not not a hundred percent. And that's what it's all about, really. That's what it's all about. Because there are people that needed me to not give in to that. There are people that God put in my in my path that needed prayer, that needed this, that needed that. And it's it's amazing that I could even <laughs> could even do it. And it isn't me. That's why. I saw this thing on Facebook, this, this campaign of T-shirts and a hat and stuff, and it, and it says, it says, um, I can't, but I know a guy. And I looked at that, and I thought, why, why, would, why, do, why do we start out with I can't? I didn't, I didn't, it didn't resonate with me. It looked really cool. I really thought it was just a cross and it just looked really awesome. But I, I just started pondering on that and I'm thinking, he's in me. I can. I can because I know the guy. Because he is in me. He is part of who I am. He is the deepest core area of who I am. He's my spirit. So I'm not going <laughs> to... I hope that doesn't cause any problems, but marketing-wise, but I'm sure they'll, they'll survive. Because <laughs> I thought it was a great idea at the first. I just started thinking about it, and then I just started thinking about it, and I, I just thought, you know, God is in us. My goodness. When we get that revelation 100%, well, at least 99.99% .99 until we see Jesus. All right. Um, so if you abide in Christ, you will surely have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And then here's the one that has really the most impact on answered prayer. To, uh, on answered prayer. Who wants to guess? Starts with a B. A B. This is the one. This is the one that has the most impact on 
Getting prayers answered. Believe. You all got that one. Believe. Mark eleven twenty two and to 24. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be, be thou removed, removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Hey! Imagine that. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Okay. Believe. Get, start wherever you're at, but don't go back the other way. Repent. Turn around from not believing. Turn around from thinking, yeah, but I need to take this pill or yeah but I need to do this and yeah but I need to get this physical therapy don't I'm not saying don't do those things I'm saying turn around from that belief and start heading the other direction believe that you will receive from the Lord that he something he's already given you you already have inside and and start we can just start believing wherever we're at wherever we're at just start there catch yourself Help each other catch yourselves saying, <sighs> saying things like, my cancer. That's what I'm talking about. Believe the other way. Turn away from that and believe the other way. I can't, for some reason, think of another thing. It's just cancer. You're being cancered. It isn't yours. You have the authority to undo the cancer. You, but you have to believe it. And if you don't believe it, it's going to be hard for you to believe it if you, had, if you didn't work on maybe a headache earlier. Do you hear what I'm saying? If we don't start praying against our headaches and our toenails and our this and our little things that are happening to our bodies, if we don't start believing for healing in those areas, when we get this report, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's not impossible. God, nothing's impossible with God. But if we start believing there, little by little, we could just move into that, that realm. Amen? Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And he's not really talking about the belief in your mind. He's talking about the belief in the mind of Christ that the Holy Spirit will give us, but it takes the renewing of this mind that we have. Um, and I... Again, I'm I'm saying this like uh, you know like I, I like I'm all that. I'm not. <laughs> it's not. I don't know this a hundred percent, but I've seen evidence enough of it that I can say it out loud, and I can believe it myself. And I know there there I'm here today because of belief. I mean, to some degree. So. This question that we're looking at right now regarding how the Holy Spirit helps us is connected to this question. How do we believe? These two things are very closely connected. Having our prayers answered is part of being guided by the Holy Spirit. You pray with the glory of God in mind to begin with, knowing that you have to go through Jesus, knowing that you have to believe that you receive, you pray with those conditions and you have your prayers answered, that's the guiding that the Holy Spirit does. When your prayers are answered, that's the guiding. If we're asking for things, one of those things being direction, 
like we all do, we ask for direction. That's a prayer. That's a petition. Of, that's a prayer petition. We're asking for guidance. Something like, Lord, help me know you more. I hear that a lot. Lord, help me know you more. Lord, help me hear your voice. Help me know that it's you. We're asking for direction, and that's a prayer. And there are many different avenues that, these an that the answers for that prayer come in. There's many different avenues. Now, in every instance where you don't receive that answer yet, I still think it's mature to look at how we are asking. When, first thing, look inside, not... not Start blaming it on the fallen world and blaming it on the devil and blaming it on that car was in the wrong lane. Start looking at inside. Look at it inside. And I think, I think that's mature. Um, because we need to look at what part of the conditions, these grace-based conditions that Jesus commanded us, what part maybe did we not fulfill? Uh, and, 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 these, and these conditions are so that we would receive answers to these whatsoever preposterous prayers. So that we can know that if we are, we are fulfilling His command, He'll let us know if we do that. Because that's repenting. That's turning around. That's looking the other way. That's looking inside, looking about, are we, are we, what part of these conditions am I not fulfilling? And He'll let us know. He'll let us know through his word. He'll let us know through other people. He'll let us know through revelation. He'll let us know even through angelic ministry. He will let us know. He won't let us miss it because we have a heart for him. We have a heart to know him, to know his will, to know his opinion, to know how he thinks. And when we have that heart, he will not let us miss it. But we must look at this with no self condemnation because the minute you do that if any of you just now went to this self-condemnation thing it just kind of blocks everything it blocks the communication and it's so selfish it's so self-centered to do that because we have a preponderance uh, that's not the right word but something you know we we, we have this uh, this natural tendency towards self-condemnation. And I don't know if everybody does, but you can look at these things and it can go that direction and that's what stops it. That's what stops the belief. That's where the unbelief gets a hold with self-condemnation. So we have to look at it not with self-condemnation, but only with the glory of God in mind. Only with the glory of God in mind. What makes it for His glory? So like when I see and I, I ponder, I do this a lot lately, I ponder and driving around, um, because I, I am doing a lot of driving, maybe that's why, but I see these awesome trees and the skies and um, even when we go to the coast, the ocean, and just the the power, the regalness, the majestic mountains that we that that I know are in Colorado, and and the ones here that are almost as majestic. But like I said earlier during worship, this is that's all a, just a snippet of the glory of God, and that's how awesome it is. It, it's overwhelming. It, it takes my breath away sometimes. <gasps> I just get like that. It's just like mind-blowing. And it's just a snippet of what he whoo, breathed out and created the universe. You look past this little planet and you look out into the skies and now with all of the telescopes and the space travel and everything, how awesome it is. And yet there's places haven't even been seen. This is the power that we can freely draw on because we're a born again. And we're and we're we're on our way. 
We're on our way. No matter where you are, start there. Just start where you are. I'm going to start where I am. I'm way past where I was three years ago. I'm way past where I was six months ago. Not way past, but somewhat past. Do you see what I'm saying? It's wherever you are, don't get self-condemning about it. It's just start where you are. Ask questions. Talk to somebody that you have. Let somebody else speak into your life. Ask someone to speak into your life that you respect. But this power, I'm going to read Micah 3.8. But truly, I am full of power. This is the King James. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Whoa. Whoa. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. What's going on in our world today? What's going on in our country today? We are full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. But we, this was, this was Micah in the Old Covenant where the Holy Spirit temporarily was upon him and he gave him this vision of how powerful the God, how powerful God is and how he is now full of that power at this moment. We have a better covenant. We have the better covenant. We have Jesus who paid all that price that was not paid when Micah was around. But the price has been paid and Jesus took care of it. So I'm going to close with Hebrews 8, verses 6 and 7. Go ahead, Forrest, you could read that for us. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Oh, hold it there. Who is he talking about? Who's the mediator of the better covenant? Jesus. You know, um, yeah, that's okay. Let's go ahead. Which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Amen. Amen. Micah knew about it. I mean, a lot of those prophets, they knew about it. David knew about it. He talked about it all the time. But it was temporary. We have this permanent situation going on here, this eternal situation in our spirits that they did not have. And it's time that we, it's getting, it's getting th this, this third great awakening that, that we're in right now is, is, is making it time for us to start to understand it and realize it. And let that influence be released of the, of the spirit from inside. Let it be released and learn how to do that. And not in so many words. It isn't so much of preaching. It isn't so much of being able to go on and on and on and on and on about it. It's, it's to hear what people say. Understand what they're thinking. Know what, where you're at with, with, each, with each relationship that you have. And then if you meet new people, find out about them first before you start to try to you know, jump down their throats with Christianity or anything else. Because you can't, if you don't know what, you, what they're thinking, then you're, you're just, who knows? It's stupid. <laughs> For lack of a better word. Father God, we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for all of these good thoughts, all of this revelation. Father, we thank you. We thank you for releasing that from our spirits into our minds, our wills, our emotions, and our understanding so that our lives can be like heaven on earth, that we can show that to people, show that to others just by being who we are, knowing who we are in you. Father God, 
Thank you. We just bless your name. We love you so much. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.